your average guardian. I apologize in advance to anyone who loves this weapon. Just let me preface what I'm about to say in the review. If this weapon speaks to you, if it fills that niche you're looking for, or you just really enjoy the experience of using it, then do so. Forget what I have to say and you just do you. That's one of the things I love about Destiny. Even some of the most disappointing weapons to some are an absolute gem in the hand of another. But dang, this thing is just not good. It's rare for me to be so underwhelmed by a weapon that I have to give it all bronze ratings, but Whistler's Whim truly is one of those weapons that makes you wish you were using almost anything else. And that's not something I say lightly, considering it has one of the most sought-after perks in both PvE and PvP, and it's the only bow in the game to call two unique perks home. I mean, with a pedigree like that, how could I possibly not enjoy it? Well, my frustration with the weapon doesn't stem from the stats, the perks, the method of getting it, any of that. This weapon just feels awful to use. Whistler's Whim is a lightweight frame bow that comes from Trials of Osiris, and comes with a stat package that puts the other lightweights to shame. But how will it feel to use in the hands of your average guardian? In short, pretty bad. Which is strange, it has higher base stats than almost every other lightweight bow in almost every category, especially if you can nab an Adept role and have access to the Adept mods, and it has Vice Stinger, widely regarded as one of the best origin traits. This gives it a chance on hit to instantly reload, give bonus movement speed, and specifically on bows, provides faster draw speed for a short time. Not only that, but lightweight frame bows just got a bit of a glow up. I'm not sure if you tried one recently, but things like Arsenic Bite, Tyranny of Heaven, Fell Teradiddle, they feel noticeably better compared to how they used to. Dude, Fell Teradiddle, <laughs> so much fun to say. Despite that, however, Whistler's almost feels like every arrow just goes whistling past your opponents. If you don't nail the perfect draw, good luck hitting. Just outside optimal range, that's a whiff. And if that physical frame doesn't get in your way, oh, that thing is so annoying. You can probably hide a whole dang team behind that grip right next to the site, and I routinely have to aim in suboptimal spots just to be able to see different avenues of approach. Something ain't right here. Which is really unfortunate because the perk pool is just chock full of winners. Rapid hit, range finder, moving target, and tunnel vision in the third column, and in the fourth, opening shot, successful warm up, and archer's tempo, alongside some real winners for this boat. It currently stands alone as the only bow capable of rolling Gutshot Straight or Kill Clip, both offering some playstyle versatility that other lightweights just can't match. And those two perks are what I'm centering my review around, because if we just pit this against other lightweight frame bows, apples to apples as far as perks go, this bow would be dropped in an instant thanks to the inconsistency mentioned earlier. I have two rolls here, one with Tunnel Vision, where reloading after a kill grants target acquisition and ADS speed, and Gutshot, which increases body shot damage while ADS at the cost of target acquisition. Gutshot straight allows the bow to double body against any resilience, the only lightweight able to do this without an outside damage bonus, but in my experience, the target acquisition loss is too heavy to be worth it. On mouse and keyboard, it's a slightly different story, but on controller, it's just way too hard to hit your target. My hope with my role was that Tunnel Vision would offset the detriment of Gutshot, which is true, it actually helps a ton while active, but the initial loss of target acquisition before that first kill just makes the weapon a slog to use. To make it work, you either have to stick to the hip of a teammate and then clean up one of their kills, struggle in a 1v1, or all the arrows just feel like they disappear. My other role is Rapid Hit, which gives a stacking bonus to stability and reload speed on headshots, and Kill Clip, which gives a sizable 33% damage bonus when reloading after a kill. This perk had people drooling over the potential to one-tap, but I am sad to say it falls just short of being able to. It's close enough, however, that almost any additional damage bonus, maybe something like Radiant, pushes it up to 201 per crit, enough to secure the one-tap against almost anyone in PvP. It's the only lightweight that can manage that feat, and heck, is one of the only bows in the game that can do it at all. Now, if only this thing had the feel of other lightweights too, this would truly be a weapon worth the investment time. Because even with my general distaste for the weapon, I could see a glimmer of hope with some of the peak potential. Little rewarding bastions of fun moments as I learned the playstyle I crafted to use with it. 
That said, even those moments are not able to save it from a bronze rating in PvP. I will be getting into a potential PvP build for it, but before that, I want to briefly talk about my ratings in PvE and Gambit. My intent is to go a little more in-depth with each major rating section in the future, but there's really not much to say here, so let's get them out of the way quickly. Its PvE potential pretty much ends with it's a bow, especially considering it doesn't come with any natural AoE perks. Sure, with Kill Clip it can make short work of trash ads, but so can any other primary. And it doesn't bring the chunk damage necessary to be worth using against beefier targets. Bronze. Gambit is more of the same, needing either significantly faster clearing, AoE, or beefy target removal, none of which this bow offers. And invading? The maps are far too large to maintain accuracy, and the prevalence of shield and healing effects on the Gambit PvE side make it unreliable against Guardians even within its effective range. Bronze again. But it's not all doom and gloom. Let's check out a setup that I actually had a lot of fun with. This setup leans heavily into the one-tap potential of the bow, and tries to be able to stand as a 1v1 capable setup rather than gluing yourself to your teammates in order to get the kill clip. I'm using Caliban's hand here, which causes our trap knives to burn targets and potentially cause ignitions if they get the kill outright. Mainly, however, I'm using it for the increased melee regen while a trap knife is placed on the map, and I leaned into this further with a melee kickstart mod to try to get my trap knife back online as quickly as possible. My stats push heavily into mobility, recovery, and strength, but strength is really the clear winner for what we're trying to do. As for the subclass setup, I'm using Gunslinger with Deadshot for rapid team takedown potential. Proximity Explosive Knives is an absolute must for use with the exotic, and for your grenade, I highly recommend healing. You can use some of the damaging grenades to help set up the cleanup kills that lead into Kill Clip, but I prefer the utility of being able to get back into the fight as quickly as possible. We're also using Acrobat's Dodge for an on-demand Radiant, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. As for our aspects, I like Knock'em Down for the increased super duration while Radiant, and the potential of getting our knife back when getting a final blow with it, which pairs perfectly with a fragment we'll hit in just a moment. On Your Mark is another fantastic option, giving three fragment slots and easy access to weapon handling and reload to both you and your allies. Speaking of fragments, the star of the show here is Ember of Torches, which makes you and nearby allies Radiant when you score a hit with your trap knife. This'll be our main way of leading into the Radiant Kill Clip 1-tap, but if we happen to get a kill without the knife, that's why we have Acrobat's Dodge. It gives us the potential to hit that 1-tap anyways with a reactive option rather than the proactive option of using the knife. Next up, I'm using Benevolence, which gives Grenade, Melee, and Class Ability Regen whenever I buff an ally, which is surprisingly often. Ember of Beams is purely to make our Golden Gun more effective, and Ember of Combustion is more of the same, but with the added benefit of giving a little extra to our most desirable stat. Finally, Ember of Solace allows us to extend our Radiant and Restoration effects, which is a must-have if we don't want to put the build on a really short clock to nail that one tap. This setup allows us to essentially make a trap build. I know people usually use Calibans to get the massive Ignite explosions, but it also allows us to freely use the knives and choke points, because we'll either use the damage to get the one tap train rolling, or we'll get the improved ability regen to help us work towards that next attempt. The big trick to making this effective is to remember you're using a bow. Slow down, use your choke points, and make sure your enemy comes to you. If they do, the trap knife and associated burn will usually result in a cleanup kill with a bow, meaning that you now instantly have Radiant and Kill Clip as soon as the next arrow is knocked, and that instant lethality makes for some fantastic hero moments. If you happen to get a cleanup kill with a teammate, or want to preemptively have Radiant ready before the fight, use Acrobat's Dodge to not only apply Radiant to yourself and others, but instantly get on your mark up to its max stacks. Check out a couple of the cool moments I managed while using this setup. I think there's really something to it.
Now I know what I'd be thinking if I were you. If I really think this setup can perform and has potential, why did I only give it a bronze in PvP? Don't worry, there's a reason, and you'll see that build in our next showcase. Hint, hint. Our build highlight for this episode comes from our Discord and tries to make a Space Marine aesthetic from Warhammer 40k. User Tank came up with the original idea and when he saw the helmet ornament for Titans on the Season Pass, and this is what I came up with for the rest of the build. But, as per the usual, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe, and if you want to catch us live, you can find us over at twitch.tv slash your average guardian. And lastly, don't forget to stay awesome, y'all. We'll see you in the next one. Peace!